So zooming in, we see probably a kind of superficial band of small vascular spaces. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't get it. It's either 45 degrees uh, one way or 45 degrees the other way. It's exactly oh, the wrong angle. <laughs> turn my head and be happy. Yeah. So these are small little vascular spaces. Some are a little bit more dilated and ectatic, but overall quite small. Um, actually, thinking a little bit of another case you happened to show me yesterday of a microvenular hemangioma, um, which I think was even more monomorphically small vessels than we see here. This has a few more dilated uh -huh. capillary spaces, um, but I think that a microvenular hemangioma is a very rare bird. Yep. Um, it's probably the best description for this. Yes, very rare bird. I like it. And yeah, this is a nice example of one. And um, they are small little venules. And they, depending on which way you cut them, they can either look like elongated vessels like this, or they can look like little round circles if they're cut in cross sections. So you get a mingled mixture of those. I think the most interesting thing about them, though, is their growth pattern. That when we look from low power, this one is kind of like you said, like kind of a band, like almost like a little plaque like thing. I've seen them go deeper into the dermis uh, as well, but they are distinctly not lobulated, right? They are very trickly and they intermingle individual channels trickling between individual collagen bundles. So um, giving it a kind of infiltrative appearance, right? And the appearance is a little bit similar to the vascular channels at the bottom of the targetoid hemosiderotic hemangioma. So I think this entity and targetoid hemosiderotic are both fair to keep in the differential for things that look like this down low. The difference is if I see these channels down here and then at the top see dilated cavernous spaces with hobnailed end endothelial cells, then I'd call that a targetoid hemosiderotic. If I just see these tiny little venous channels trickling between collagen, then I'd call that a microvenular hemangioma. And you know, we we often talk about splitting and why do people split uh, entities in pathology and make all these subtypes. The most important thing is when it matters clinically. This is a totally benign thing. It doesn't matter clinically. I think the main reason is so that we understand as pathologists, this is an unusual pattern that could make you concerned for something else. And historically, I think part of the reason I was taught this by Omar Sangueza, uh, who is a great dermopath who has a lot of interest in vascular tumors, that in the early days of the AIDS epidemic, when Kaposi sarcoma was recognized in young people and as a sign of if you were a young person with Kaposi's, you probably had AIDS and no one knew what caused it and there was no cure. So it was a hugely important, serious thing that if you called something Kaposi's, you're giving someone probably AIDS. You're basically saying that they have AIDS. And back then everyone died, right? I mean, so it was a terrifying time that, you know, I was a, a young child when that those days happened and I was not in medicine yet. But I thought that was a great point that people started to recognize these variants of benign hemangioma that could potentially mimic Kaposi sarcoma, and that was important to make the distinction. And so some of these variants, I think, where the, they started becoming um, talked about more was for their potential to mimic Kaposi sarcoma, because they kind of, you could confuse this with the slit-like spaces of Kaposi. I think these are actually more well-formed, and you don't get like individual spindle cells trickling out, but you could... You know, you could struggle with an area like that without clinical context, right? So one thing you can do is if you do a CD31 and an actin, you'll see nice well-formed vessels and each of them are lined by a pericyte layer. But you can also just do an HHVA to make sure it's negative if you're struggling. I do think there is a morphologic difference. Uh, and thankfully, we live in a day and age where we have immunostains to help us if we're struggling. But in the past, um, it was much harder. So I think, yeah, like you said, I've only seen a few of these in my whole career. Uh, quite uh, quite uncommon, uh, but uh, benign and beautiful, and a nice little entity to know about um, it, because of its trickly growth. And no no atypia whatsoever. These are the, the blandest endothelial cells you could imagine.